everybody, everybody been there? Good, good. Um, Social-engineering.org is really just a all-in-one resource and framework for social engineering. Uh, we also have a podcast, which I skipped ahead two slides. And the podcast itself, when I mean, we get high-end people that specialize in human behavior, when we get PhDs from Harvard, um, people that have published 20 books on human behavior, um, and the whole goal is to really educate people of really how we're programming. The latest podcast uh, that we just just recorded two days ago should be out within an, uh, the next week or two. Uh, we had a, a guy, name's escaping me for some reason, but um, he published like 20 books on human behavior. And he asked me on the phone, he's like, hey, uh, Dave, you know, look to the left of you. You know, and I looked to my left, he's like, is your desk in a complete array? And I got papers everywhere, I got my pen, you know, I got my book, you know, you know just all this stuff spread across my, my desk. He's like, okay, look to your right. What's my right? And he's like, what's there? I'm like, well, not really much. It's all orderly and everything like that. He's like, all right, well, you're left-handed. I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay. So now I know by going to your desk or what you do in your behavior that you're a left-handed person. He's like, did you know that there's a higher success rate if you talk or whisper something into someone's left ear and they're left-handed than there is with the right and the right ear and right hand? They're left-handed. Because based on what part of the brain actually interprets what you're going to do will actually make you decide a certain way generally better than the other way. So you have like an 85% chance in my left hearing in my left ear to agree with you than you know 60% in my right ear, which is pretty interesting. I guess publishing you know, like insane amount of books. So I don't know. Maybe it can be fake, who knows? But uh, a really good resource to, to go through that. The social engineer framework uh, really has basically everything you possibly need to, to perform a social engineering within your organization or learn more about it. Uh, really great resource if you haven't checked it out. So I released a new version of Set and Not Account. So it was about uh, a few weeks ago. I always come up with crazy names. The last one was uh, was a Rise of the Pink Pirate or something. Yeah. I don't know where I'm up with these. <laughs> and a long story, I mean, uh, Duff Count 16 I was presenting on Fast Track and uh, the offensive security team decided that it'd be pretty funny to uh, launch a lot of lemons at me. So while I was on stage at DEF CON, I had about 70 lemons launched at me, and one happened to get me right across the face, which then dis disoriented me, and I had no idea what I was doing. So, <laughs> yeah. so basically, it's, set. it's open source. It's free. You can it do what like, you want to. It was like a lemon party? What? It was like a lemon party? It was like a lemon party? What's that? Oh. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> So uh, set is uh, open source. It's purely Python driven. Do what you want to with it. If you want to rename it and call it your own tool and you know tell your company that you wrote it, go for it. I don't care. It's free. Um, it integrates with Metasploit primarily because obviously Metasploit is a framework, right? Everything you saw there from building exploits to launching exploits to creating your own payloads, because it's a framework. Uh, so building stuff into it is what it's designed to do. So it's payload repositories, it's client side exploits. Everything like that, you don't want to recreate the wheel because those guys are much smarter when it comes to that. Focus on that, and the framework is absolutely useful for that. It's multiple attack vectors specifically designed for social engineering, hence the social engineering toolkits. Uh, it's for good, not bad. So, all pen testers and organizations test their security program. Who here is bad? Um, no. Hey, so everybody here is good, so we can at least. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about the different set attack vectors. Um, there's a spear phishing attack, and everybody knows what spear phishing is, hopefully. It's just targeted attacks against an organization, either via email or other methods, in order to coax them into doing something. You know, whether or not you're double-clicking an EXE or a PDF or, you know, whatever you're doing um, to compromise the system, the spear phishing attack will I'll explain that. It'll definitely help you out. The web attacks, this is this is probably my, my favorite aspect of the social engineering toolkit. The web attack vectors. Uh, pretty dangerous. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. The malicious payload, uh, malicious USB, DVD, and CD. Um, really simple, basic attack, but it'll definitely grow over time. This is new in version 0.5, uh, but it'll automatically create a you know auto run based USB, DVD, or CD for you, so that you, know, you can distribute them, and then when they go and insert their computer, it you know drops a Metasploit payload and they compromise. So again, all around social engineering. So new in version 7.05 which is my favorite version right now. Well, I guess there is one version. But um, the credential harvest, I want to show you a quick example of this one. And by the way, uh, set is uh, in backtrack uh, by default. It's under the slash pen test slash exploit slash set. And then it's actually all cap letters um, in there. 
So it's this uppercase set. First thing you want to do when you get set, if you're using just a standard version of Backtrack, is you want to update it. And similarly to Metasploit, you just type in SVN update. And that will go and pull down the latest version of set for you. Now to run set, step in set. Now set is a menu-driven tool. So if you notice and you're familiar with Fast Track, uh, the interactive mode is pretty much the same thing as this. I, I prefer menu-driven, you know, type, type attack vector. Command lines get confusing. Uh, so when I program set, I did it from this back, uh, this method. And um, so a set, we'll go through the, the web attack vector first, and the credential harvester. Uh, this is specifically for if you're targeting an organization and you can get people to click a link or a browser or your site. A lot of times what I'll do it for, you know, is entice a victim, uh, either through calling them up or um, it integrates with an editor app and a bunch of other things um, in order to get them to click on your site and compromise you. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the site cloner. And here's where the attack starts to get potentially dangerous. So what you can do is you can clone any website you want to on the internet. So let's pick on Google. Um, and we're going to do the credential harvester method. So uh, you, you see here I selected the site cloner. I clicked on the credential harvester method. And then we're going to go ahead and clone Gmail. So clone it. And all we do is hit enter. So this is my attacker machine. Uh, so I have a Python-based web server running that will handle the request for us. Now, to show you what's going to happen is somehow I entice a victim. You know, again, either you email them or, or some other method. And we're going to go to this website. Now, you see, it loaded up pretty quickly. We have a website here that looks exactly like Gmail, right? You need every indication that it is Gmail. Type in the, my username. I type it in, I hit enter. And if you look here, oh, that's weird, probably back to, to Google, okay? And if you look at the top here, where am I? Google. Right, Google. However, on our other end, it harvested all of our credentials for us. So you can see here I got my username field. And I got my password field. So that's nice. Now, when you control C out of here, it will export um, automatically a report format for you. So it'll do HTML based formatting and also do XML based formatting if you want to create a tool off of it. Go right ahead. Um, but what's nice about this is if you're doing a mass phishing attack against someone and you get, say, 50 people, it is multi threaded, so it'll handle multiple connections and things like that. Um, it'll generate a nice report for you, and I'll just show you a really quick output of that report. Source addresses, um, things like that, into it. 
the WebAttack email, and that 